All right, so let's get started with EKGs. So again, with EKGs on the boards, I want you to understand that there's a few things that they're gonna ask you and they want you to focus on. Don't make it more complicated than it is. I know it's a very daunting and intimidating subject, but think of it from a board perspective and the way that I think, the way that I would ask questions. What I want you to know is they're gonna try to make you identify strips and the more common ones. So the ones that I cover here are the ones I want you to worry about, okay? They're gonna want you to know potentially what the causes are, potentially, and I'll tell you for the ones that they'll want you to know, but definitely what you're going to do about it. So how are you gonna treat that rhythm and the progression of how are you gonna treat that rhythm? So if it's procedure-wise, cool. If it's medication-wise, know the side effects, things of that nature. You're going to want to pay attention to what I'm providing you with these notes, with these notes, and just focus on that. Just focus on that. But let's also understand, let's understand what EKGs are showing us. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to look at the different portions of it. We've got a P wave, a Q wave, an R wave, an S wave, and a T wave. P, Q, R, S, T. The P is what part of the heart? What part of the heart is the P showing us? It's showing us the atrium. It's showing us the atrium. When a P wave happens, that means that the atrium has contracted, which means the QRST is going to be what? The ventricle, good. The ventricles. So when the QRST happens, now we've got the ventricles contracting. What electrolyte predominantly controls the atrium? Calcium, calcium. What electrolyte predominantly controls the ventricles? Potassium. So now you ask yourself, as you go back to day one, when I talk about ask graph and why changes in potassium are so important, it's because they predominantly control the ventricles. If they predominantly control the ventricles and we've got changes in potassium, low or high, we can go into a dysrhythmia. The ventricles can go into a dysrhythmia. And what dysrhythmia are we freaking out about? VFib. We will get into VFib when I get into the ventricles, okay? And we'll talk about what we're gonna do and how to identify it. But this is the basics of how I want you to understand the different portions of an EKG. The second thing I want you to know is how to approximate a heart rate as quickly as possible. Now, is this the only way to approximate a heart rate? No. If you have your own way of knowing how to read and find the heart rate, stick to it. If you don't have a way, this is a method that I use that ends up being quick and fast for me because the boards are gonna make things quick. They're gonna make things simple. What I want you to do is I want you to look at your RR interval. So between your R and your R. And in between those two Rs, those two little peaks are going to be big boxes.
And all you have to do is count the number of big boxes and divide 300 by it. So in this situation, I've got how many big boxes are in between my R and my R, my two peaks. There are four, right? My drawing's not that great, but yeah, there's four there, right? So one, two, three, four. So what would I take? I would take 300 and divide it by four, which would give me a heart rate of what? Approximately 75. The boards are not gonna overly complicate it. They're going to make it simple. So understanding, understanding that you can glance at a strip and look at your peaks, your R and your R, count the number of big boxes, take the number 300, divided by the number of big boxes, and now all you've got is your approximate heart rate. They're not gonna make it unclear or ambiguous. It's gonna either be blatantly low, blatantly normal, or blatantly high, okay? So don't overthink it, don't overthink it. So let's get started with normal sinus rhythm. So normal sinus rhythm, it's got the word sinus in there. And what does that mean? Well, we've got two nodes in our heart. We've got the sinoatrial node, which is also known as the pacemaker of the heart. And then we've got the atrioventricular node. So let's think about this. The sinoatrial node is the pacemaker of the heart, meaning it's gonna start the heart off and what's the first part of the heart that's gonna contract? The first part of the heart that's gonna contract is now the atrium. And as the sinoatrial node fires, the atrium will contract, we will develop a P wave. Now the atrium is going to have a signal that is going to hit the atrioventricular node because the signal is coming from the atrium and now it's going to cause the ventricle to contract. And now we have a QRST. So let's go through that one more time. There's a node in the heart called the sinoatrial node or the SA node. It is the pacemaker of the heart. It's what starts everything off. When the sinoatrial node starts and it fires, it will contract the atrium, and now we've got a P wave. That impulse, that signal will now travel through the atrium, get to the, the AV node, and now the a AV node will fire. So now that signal from the atrium is now going to make the ventricle contract through the AV node. And now we've got a QRST. So a normal sinus rhythm, okay, so let's just break that up. Let's take out the word normal. Let's just worry, let's work, let's just focus on the word sinus rhythm. How about that? Okay. Sinus rhythm means what? The sinoatrial node is firing correctly. If the sinoatrial node is firing correctly, the atrium is going to contract, so we will have a P wave. That signal will now hit the AV node, and now the AV node will fire, and the ventricle will contract, and we'll have a QRST. So in every sinus rhythm, in every sinus rhythm, 
what are we going to see? A P Q R S T. Cool. Just sinus. Well, there's just a word sinus rhythm. How about that? So now tell me the difference between normal sinus rhythm, sinus bradycardia, and sinus tachycardia, just by the words itself. Normal is going to be a heart rate of what? 60 to 100. Okay. For the boards, remember, normal is normal. There is no ambiguity. 100 is now borderline, 60 is now borderline, it's normal. So in normal sinus rhythm, will we see a PQRST? Absolutely. And when we go to check the heart rate with that RR interval, just like we did previously, and we saw four big boxes, it fell between 60 and 100, so we have a normal sinus rhythm. In sinus bradycardia, are we going to have a PQRST? Yes, because it's a sinus rhythm. But the heart rate is going to be where? Below 60. In sinus tachycardia, are we going to have a PQRST? Yes, because the sinoatrial node is firing, so we got that. P wave, then it hits the AV node and we get our QRST, so yes. But the difference in tachycardia is it's going to be where? It's going to be above 100, okay? So understanding what sinus rhythm means is just understanding that our pacemaker or our sinoatrial node is firing, our atrium is contracting, we got a P wave. That signal hits the AV node and now the ventricle contracts, we got a QRST, that is sinus rhythm. Normal is going to be between 60 and 100. Brady is going to be below 60. And tachy is going to be above 100. 